Testing. <clears throat> Testing one, two, three. Check in the mic. Test one, two. Help. Help. Testing one, two. Asparagus. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Check. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Henry's Kitchen, where today we're going to be making Henry's amazing Greek style Spanakopita, or sometimes pronounced Spanakopita. Actually, you can uh, pronounce it by putting this stress on any one of the vowels, there's, or any one of the syllables. There's five syllables, so you could say Spanakopita or Spanakopita, or you can do Spanakopita, or Spanakopita, or Spanakopita. Uh, it's really up to you. If you watch YouTube, you'll see various pronunciations. Uh, if anybody out there is Greek, maybe you can tell them how you pronounce it, because it is a Greek dish. Uh, Orange Bean says, I'll use the fourth one, so that would be Spanakopita. Uh, Moles Zitona says, or spank the pita. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank a couple people here. Fant Q has subscribed. Thanks, Fant Q. Uh, Microsoft XL, I've heard of that, has resubscribed. Thank you. Um, Beautiful Jen, resubscribed. Slothland, Mastel. And Elowith have subscribed. Thank you very much. We're going to have a lot of fun today. We have a very uh, festive dish. The Spanakopita is often um, eaten at uh, weddings or, or uh, festivities, times of celebration. Um, so it should be a lot of fun. We're also going to be celebrating the fact that uh, today... Uh, a new game came out called Food Truck Simulator, and I'm going to try it, and um, hopefully I'll be better at it than I was at Cooking Simulator. Uh, basically, I have a food truck, and I serve it to people at the park, so we'll see how that goes. And also a couple of song requests that we got on the Discord. But uh, let's see here. We have some questions. Hacklin says, do you think I can make Spanakopita? even though I have never been to Greece. You know, going to the country that it's from um, is always uh, better if you can do it. But, I mean, I ate pizza probably for the okay. first 50 years of my life and never really uh, had been to Italy where it's from. So it's not necessary. Um, Rolf... LOL 1992 is resubscribed. Thank you, Rolfully LOL 92. Okay. So, uh, if you have not tried Spanakopita before, you're in for a treat. Spanakopita is a delicious, savory Greek pie made of perfectly crispy layers of phyllo dough and a comforting filling of spinach and feta cheese. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any feta cheese, but we'll be just using cheddar cheese, which is fine. I'm sharing my family's favorite Spanakopita recipe, complete with tips, videos, and step-by-step -step photos. Trust me, this is so much easier than you think. Spanakopita makes a great side dish for large holiday dinners next to lamb or lemon chicken, but it can easily stand alone as the main dish. Serve it with a big salad like Greek salad, balela, or this Mediterranean chickpea salad, click here, and favorite dips like Greek tzatziki or roasted garlic hummus. So a lot of big words. What is spinacopita? My little one describes spinacopita this way. Quote, yummy, okay. crispy cheese pie with lots of green stuff. Uh, I want to make it clear. I actually don't have a little one. I got this recipe online. Um, so that's just know that. Okay. 
Spinakopita is a popular Greek savory pie made of perfectly flaky phyllo dough with a comforting filling, comforting usually means high calories, low nutrition, of spinach and feta cheese nestled in, but the spinach is gonna be nutritious. If you're not familiar with phyllo dough, it's basically layered sheets of tissue thin pastry dough, typically found in the freezer section next to things like pie crust and puff pastry. When I was in, when I was at an Atlanta area Greek festival a few weeks ago, my daughter's lunch of choice was a piece of spinakopita and a side of Greek salad. By the way, I don't have a daughter. Again, I'm just reading this from a recipe on, uh, on the internet. Sorry, that's my cat, um, roast beef. I'll see if I can get you a shot. I think he's been dealing with a lot of okay. uh, issues. Yeah, no, now he's not even in the frame anymore. So we're going to keep checking back in with roast beef, but uh, he's moving around a lot. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh, yeah. My daughter's lunch of choice was a piece of of Spanakopita and side of Greek salad, luckily, she allowed me a taste. It was heavenly. I ended up chatting with the woman behind the lavish lunch. Her name was Yiya Helen. We discussed family recipes and shared Spanakopita lessons and tips. Okay, so they're getting into other stuff there, but... Um, We've got uh, our ingredients list here, so let's go ahead and uh, start with that. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, Mafronzo Yezdi says, my cat scream like that when he's hungry. When, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I fed him a lot. He eats a lot. I don't know, but I do have him on this new diet, so maybe that's it. He's also very old, and so a lot of times uh, he'll just scream. Oh, you know, another thing I was told is that his ears are, are very poor because I took him to the vet. And so uh, when he screams really loud, it's because he's trying to test his... He's trying to make sure that he can hear his own voice. And I do that sometimes, too. I, I went to a lot of rock concerts in my younger days, and sometimes I can't hear myself, so just to check and make sure that the, uh, the voice is still there, I'll have to get it at a pretty high volume. Hold on a second. Well, <clears throat> I don't think roast beef is gonna cooperate with us today, unfortunately. He, he'll get settled. Um, all right, well, let's let's get into the recipe here. Uh, robot, uh, oh no, sorry, Rathor 178. Um, Mankas, you've mentioned Greece a few times now, but I don't see it on the ingredient list. Is it safe for me to use bacon grease? No, this is Greece. Uh, we've, we're talking about Greece, the geographical country, as opposed to um, whatever it was that you thought we were doing. Uh, everyone type force and says I put butter in my coffee like you did last week, but my heart hurts Yeah, no, that's don't do that. That's called bullet coffee, and it's part of this keto diet uh, They wanted me to put a stick of butter in my coffee, and it was terrible um, I guess what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, get people on a no sugar diet to keep them from di diabetes, but Yeah, I had uh, some weird uh, feelings a couple of hours after that coffee for sure. It was a combination of rapid heart movement and also it felt like it was skipping beats every now and then. Uh, sh staring at Twitch is asparagus a fruit? That I'm not sure. Oh, um, I have someone here 
who said, uh, boy, it goes by this really fast here. Um, Maybay Support says, Henry, I got my first box from your sponsor. It was good. Wow, that's very nice. So F Factor 75 sponsored um, the broadcast a couple weeks ago. If you're, if you're still interested in doing that, um, you should see the link underneath my um, video. And there's a code that you put in. And then that means that you got it from Henry's Kitchen. And it also means you get a discount. So if you're interested in doing that, you can. But I'm glad to hear... Yeah, I got my boxes and they're great. It's basically boxed meals. But uh, let's let's get into cooking ourselves here. Um, uh oh. Okay, I had turned that off to save the battery. Um, so what we've got here basically are four <coughs> eggs in a mixing bowl. Pepper to taste, salt to taste, both in their own grinders, which is how they sell them nowadays. Again, I don't have feta cheese. You can use any kind of cheese you want. I have some leftover cheddar from when we made our weenie bites. And then I've also got uh, our spinach, which is okay. a very important part of it. And I've got green onions as well. Um, I have a whole lesson online about how to cut green onions that you can look up. But for now, uh, let's start by, yeah, well, let's cut our green onions. There was something else I was going to say, and I don't remember. Something about cheese. Oh. Um. Uh, let's go ahead and use the roast beef uh, cutting board that I have here. So, uh, Uh, you don't need a super sharp knife to cut green onions. Just grab whatever you have here. I have this. I don't know, know what this okay. is necessarily for. Oh, and I want to thank a couple of these people that have been subscribing. Gravy Robber, What the Duck, Braille's Wife, Ginger Soldier One, Sir Goose. I know Sir Goose. Sir Goose turned me on to Bumble Vision and uh, the LGX. Rolf Mal 92 has resubscribed and fan queue like we talked about. All right. Um, okay, so thank okay. you guys. Oh wait, no, no, I, it's Sir Goose. I mis mistook for Sir Doom, but I'm sure Sir Goose is a very nice person as well. Okay, thank you. And let's go ahead and start cutting up some green onions. I don't think we're gonna need all of these. We might wanna save some of them. Okay. There's a couple of shitty ones and we'll just put those aside. And let's work with Yeah, see if it's if it's limp like that, that's not going to do you any good. So, um, let's put that aside, but we've got some nice solid ones here. Just to make sure you have a visual. That's not good. Okay, so let's put the rest of these back in the fridge and use them for another recipe where they're not as central to the uh, final product. Is it this side? Cutting onions okay. Uh, is always a very uh, sort of a what they call a cathartic experience where it makes it, it sort of gets out your whatever kind of aggressions you've worked out over the course of the evening. <clears throat> Thanks Anonymous for gifting a sub to Moon Moon and Friend Chicken. 
or fiend chicken when you get toward the end here. So there's this kind of weird hairy part at the end. I don't know if you can see that. Um, looks like a guy with hair on his head. Uh, you want to cut that off. You don't want that. And same with this one. And just throw that away. So there we have our green onions. So that worked out well. Um, why don't we put that in our work bowl? Well, first, I guess we should probably crack. Well, here, let's move these eggs. Try not to crack the eggs. Okay. Let's put our green onions in there. And let's do our spinach. This is baby spinach, uh, but you can use any age spinach. Adult spinach is fine. Um, I want you to be able to see some of this. We're literally just taking our spinach and putting it in. Now spinach is going to get smaller when you cook it. So that means that you're going to want to uh, put use all of it because you'll be surprised how low it gets. All right, I've got some overflow here. If you're doing this at home, hopefully you've got in front of you a bowl with a shit ton of spinach. And I'm just going to chop it up by hand. This is the way they do it in Greece. Uh, yeah, the queen died, LOL, says it's true spinach lose up to 98% of its size. Yeah, that's true. Uh, what the duck says, what's the difference between green, white, and red onions? Is it just the food coloring used on them during packaging? Please clarify. I'm not sure why they're different colors, but yeah, I would, I would imagine it's something with the way they process them. All right. Uh, I'm also trying to mix in our uh, those onions that we have that are on the bottom. But I do notice with the green onions, you don't have to wear the goggles like you do when you're cutting regular onions. Okay, next up, we're going to add our eggs. We are making spinacopita. Okay, so I have a little bit of shell in there, as you can see. Um, not to fret. This is the kind of thing that would have made me give up a long time ago, but I learned a little trick from my grandma that when you, when you have a shell that you need to get out, you can actually use the broken shell that you used to get it out. She said this was a little trick that she learned when she was in the joint. Um, I'm going to try a different shell. Problem is I'm getting other parts of this shell in there now. All right. You know, a little bit of shell is not going to hurt anybody. So let's just sort of stop worrying about it. You know, at the end of the day, this is going to be all mixed up into a fine uh, mixture. So it's not really important to remove any uh, shell or anything like that. Okay, so I'm going to throw these away. Rinse off my hands a little bit. And uh, let's continue to stir. I might need a better stirring mechanism than this, but we'll see. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit here. Uh, so this is going to take a few minutes, so let's we'll see if anybody has any questions out there. Uh, Chicken Liver Nuts says, the shell has the most nutrients. I didn't know that. It could be, though. Oh, there's a little bit of shell right there. 
They say that removing a shell from a bowl is one of the most difficult things that a person is going to have to do in their life. And I do it a whole lot. See, the other problem is that it sticks to your thumb. Uh, I'm sure they probably mean in the kitchen. Obviously, losing a loved one to cancer would be more difficult, I would imagine, than getting an eggshell out of a... But then again, I don't know. It is very difficult. Either way. Okay, so how's yours looking? I'd like to know. Falkan says, does this recipe require the oven? Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Uh, we've been having a heat wave here in Southern California where I am. So it's been a little difficult uh, to do dishes uh, where it requires heat. But actually, I'm happy to say that the heat uh, is over now. I mean, the, the heat wave anyway. It's still warm. But uh, thank you, Falkan. We're going to preheat our ovens to 325 degrees. This is one of the reasons, see now I had forgotten that and fortunately I was reminded, but um, a lot of times when you go in the kitchen, just go ahead and start your oven because chances are you're going to need it. And you can even go to the extent of just leaving the oven on at all times, especially in the winter months, um, so that you don't have to wait 20 minutes to preheat it when, every time you want to make a dish. Um, GT Wet, uh, will this recipe work for me if I'm bald as shit? Um, I don't think it really makes a difference. Um, Prince Kenny, can I use lettuce instead of spinach? They're pretty, yeah, absolutely. Any type of green is going to work. I like to use the spinach because it's darker color, so it adds a little contrast, especially on the camera, but... No, you don't, you don't need to worry. But here, I'm going to preheat my oven now. It's at 325 degrees. I'm also going to take out a bunch of shit that's in there. And let's go back to stirring. Let's see, uh, super duper epic. Hey Henry, how do I deal with the ever growing dread that I will never find someone to spend my life with and will die alone? You know what? If you can cook, you might die alone, but you certainly won't need to have a partner because you'll be so busy in the kitchen. That's one thing that I've found. Also, I would say get yourself a really good saute pan and, uh, you know, try to get into different, uh, different seasonings to keep, keep things spicy in the kitchen. Uh, there's something here I'm trying to get out. Oh, yeah, it's just a very large cut of our onion. But um, I think our spinach mixture is basically there. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing any other uh, ingredients here. I've got the recipe up. It just says, um, okay, so we've got our spinach, we've got our green onion, um, we've got our eggs, oh, our cheese. Yeah, we have to crumble our cheese into this now. Uh, along with our salt and pepper. So we're going to do our seasonings now. So I'm going to grab, for cheese, well, for the salt, I'm just going to sprinkle to taste on both of these using my grinders. And then for the cheese, uh, I have uh, some fine cheddar from uh, when we made our weenie bites. So, the best way to do this, I guess, would be to grab the, this thing, 
and okay. just start grading. Uh, Bergwundi has just resubscribed. Thank you, Bergwundi. Kathy says, load that up. Uh, and on 140, shouldn't it be feta since it's Greek? Cheddar's fine too, I guess. You know, um, all cheeses are made by a similar process. It's basically just aged milk. Psycho Street, thanks for subscribing. Uh, so, you know, it's going to vary in color and maybe a little bit in taste, but it's still going to be delicious. There's an old motto in the kitchen that if you've got cheese in whatever you're making, it's going to be delicious no matter what. And uh, that's what's going to happen here if we put enough of it in there. This is a very cheese-oriented dish. If you're just joining us, we're making spinach patat. Exoden 3, 3300 just resubscribed. Thank you, Exoden 3300. I'm sorry if I missed anybody okay. while I was in the midst of uh, doing this. Zura. Thanks, Zura. Okay, so let's continue. We've got now sort of a grated cheese ball, if you will. But now, you can see this really happening here. We've got salt, pepper, onions, and spinach and eggs. If you're just joining us, if you don't have a bowl in front of you that looks like a shit ton of spinach, you need to ask yourself what you're doing wrong. Uh, I gave all the ingredients on the Discord the night before, so you should have all that stuff in front of you. Uh, looks like we need more cheese. Uh, another Whompy says, I'm trying to follow along, but it's 2 a.m. and now my housemate is threatening to kick me out. Um, uh, is your housemate in control of the kitchen? Because 2 a.m. sounds a little late. It doesn't sound like you'd be bothering anybody by co cooking in there. So you might want to, uh, evaluate your housemate situation. Um, my housemate, of course, is a cat. And even though we've agreed to have equal uh, dominion over the territory, I'm a larger being, so I'm able to uh, do things in the kitchen even when he's not into it. All right. M. Frozo Yezdes says... Uh, you could also make sweet pastry sticks with the remaining dough. That's good. That's good to know. Sweet pastry sticks. Sounds nice. All right, let's do a little bit more of our cheese. You can see there's a lot of cheese. The Greeks like to eat a lot of cheese. And in Wisconsin, they eat a lot of cheese also. In uh, Montreal, they like cheese. Um... In Minnesota, they love cheese. As a matter of fact, there's an old saying that in Minnesota, they like cheese more than they like people. Which could be true, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so this is looking cheesy and eggy. I like it. Uh, let's go on to our next step. We're gonna start working with something called phyllo dough, and it's spelled P-H-Y-L-L-O. I believe that we've worked with this before, although I can't remember what. Or no, I think I needed phyllo dough for something, but I couldn't find any, so we used something else. But, um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some waxed paper because this thing underneath is filthy this way we won't contaminate our dish with whatever it is that was on there before which was probably just my previous dish okay so I need to start by opening this thing 
By the way, one thing I may have forgotten to mention on the Discord is that you have to keep this out of the refrigerator for a full day before you um, work with it. So, all right, so this is already kind of problematic. I uh, need something to cut this with. Okay, and then there's more plastic on the inside of it. I guess that it's probably... Okay, that's the oven. I need to cool down a second and just drink a cup of coffee. I felt myself getting a little bit stressed out there with this phyllo, and I'm trying not to get too uh, emotionally worked up in the kitchen because it's not good for your heart. Um... Wad Doge 265, I don't have a knife to stir it with. Is there any, are there any alternatives? Um, you know, you could do it with your hands, but then you're going to get egg all over your hands. Uh, just look around, you know, there might be a fork or a spoon or uh, you can use something called a spork, which is actually a hybrid spoon slash fork uh, combination. Okay. And I like to use that for cutting, too, because it's not... Sorry, we have some flies in here. Uh, Coffee with Coom has resubscribed. Thank you, Coffee with Coom. And Zura and Exoden 3300, Psycho Street, Bergwin D. Uh, Prince Kenny, you should do a show where you invite other streamers to cook and you judge their technique. Um, that's a great idea. And we've done that a little bit. Well, we've had it where um, I, that would be a Thursday night thing for sure. But we've done some collaborative cooking things. But I appreciate the suggestion. Hacklin says, my mom kicked me out because I watched you too much. Oh, boy. Now I'm watching you at the local electronics store. The place is going to close soon and it's getting dark and cold. Okay. So, Hacklin, uh, it sounds like you're uh, on the brink of homelessness there, and that's not good. So, I would say try to go back to your mom's place and uh, tell her um, that you won't watch the show anymore, which is sad, but uh, maybe you can watch it on your phone in bed at night and uh, leave the volume down. Um, uh, Barney Vernis... Tavanger says, uh, Mr. Henlip's one brother, can you please make a halal meal tutorial? Uh, halal sounds great. I, there's a lot of halal places in my neighborhood, uh, so I'm going to have to try that. Uh, is that Mediterranean as well? Um, okay. Here we go. These are very, very thin sheets of dough. And you do not want to break these because they're going to serve as the foundation uh, for what you're doing here. So I'm going to start by opening it up. And we want to get one sheet, which I have here, which unfortunately already is starting to come apart. All right, I'm going to put that aside. You want to leave it intact as much as you can. It's obviously, it's going to be impossible to have it completely perfect, but I'm going to try. Perfection in the kitchen um, as much as... It might be annoying to a loved one, but if you live by yourself, it's something to strive for. Okay. Um, it's really hard to get these. In a weird way, it's kind of like you're working with paper.
Okay, so I think this is enough for a bottom layer. No, you know what? I'm going to do one more because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to have it fall out the bottom. This one got a little messed up. Make it as much of an even layer as you can. Okay, so if you're doing this at home, hopefully you have something in front of you that looks a little bit like toilet paper on a cookie sheet. And we're gonna add now our first layer. Oh, very important, we've got our extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin, I don't know what they mean by that, although coincidentally that was my nickname in high school. Um, I'm gonna use, I guess a spatula. And we're gonna very carefully spread this across our bottom layer. Try not to do any damage. All right, so this is unfortunate. I was trying to put olive oil on my bottom layer and uh, it sort of um, coagulated in one okay. area. So I didn't get an even thing. So I'm just, this isn't really the best tool to do this with, but whatever okay so we have quite a bit of olive oil on there but uh, let's go ahead and put down some of our mixture you can see the egg there uh, that's gonna get cooked don't worry nobody's gonna be getting salmonella on my watch again Okay. That's our bottom layer. Now we're going to put on some more phyllo dough. It's I've kind of given up at, on, at this point on trying to be too perfect with it but whatever it's going to cook and it's going to be nice if you want to see what we're going for here uh there it is very nice tight uh sandwich looking uh spinach situation uh the spanacopita the word uh spana comes from spinach and copita means a pita, which is like bread. And uh, so, that's, so it's basically spinach bread, but extremely thin bread. Starting to look a little bit like a mummy. Maybe this would have been a good uh, Halloween dish now that I think about it. mummified spinach okay now I'm gonna go ahead and put down the rest of our spinach mixture um, people get really uh, anal when it comes to cheeses I look at it like you can use any kind of cheese for whatever purpose you want but if you're in New York City and you're making somebody a pizza and you put cheddar cheese on it instead of mozzarella or whatever they use you're likely to get your ass pummeled okay by that I mean figuratively you're gonna get uh, a mouthful of uh, harsh words is probably what would happen. Or they might physically kick your ass. I, I don't know. 
New Yorkers can be unpredictable. All right. And that is it. Now it's time to take this. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part. We have to cut it into triangles. Well, how did they do it in our uh, example pick here? Oh yeah, these are in squares, so that's gonna be a little easier. Normally you do them in triangles, and there was a particular reason for that, which is escaping me at the moment, but uh, I'm gonna put the rest of our phyllo dough away for another dish. Like for example, maybe um, Halal uses phyllo dough, or maybe, uh, I think baklava does. Baklava is one that I've made before. And uh, that one does use phyllo dough. So we're gonna put this in the freezer so that we can use it again. Hopefully it's not, it doesn't go in there very easily, okay. How's everybody doing here? Uh, should have been, uh, Lola J says, should I have been using a triangle tray? Yeah, if you have a triangle tray, all the better. Astro Wrath the Grim, uh, they do triangle because of uh, Pythagoras. Okay, yeah, I knew it was something to do with Greek mythology. Uh, Dr. Gatchi says, can I use used toilet paper? No, obviously not, um, but you can use regular. Prince Kenny, uh, about what I suggested. I knew you already did it with Nim. I meant with more streamers, uh, where they compete to get your approval. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm very confident with the work that I do in the kitchen. Um, it's one of the few things that I've ever tried in my life that I'm actually good at and so uh, I'll hold myself up against any one of the biggest chefs um, that there are any day of the week if uh, if we want to have a cook-off of some sort I would love um, to see what they got so all right um, let's go ahead and put this in the oven for now and uh, It says, bake in the oven 325 degrees for one hour. Okay, so that's a lot. So I don't know. Well, yeah, we're going to have an hour here because we're going to be playing games and doing all kinds of other stuff. So uh, here we go. Let's put this in the oven. If you want to take one last look at it. It's pretty clean. Let's uh, let's start doing some other uh, extracurricular things. I've always said uh, cooking is great uh, if you're into that sort of thing, but if you do it, you're gonna have. Uh, some downtime and you have to figure out what you're gonna do with your downtime you can watch movies you can play video games you can play music which is what I most prefer to do and there's been a couple of requests for songs on the discord and I'm gonna try to get to those right now Okay, Okay, Kala, someone named Kala on Discord, requested this song, which I believe is from the 90s. Um, it's a song that you've probably heard on the radio a whole bunch. Um,
page is unresponsive. Okay, I, I went to that. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what's happening with my internet connection here. Are, do you guys hear me okay? Okay, so it looks like it's just the guitar. Uh... Oh, okay, now it works fine. I, I don't know what happened. Um, all right, so we're going to try to do this song here. It's by a group called Train. And it was requested by Kala on the Discord. Now that she's back in the atmosphere with drops of Jupiter in her hair, hey, hey, hey. She acts like summer and she walks like rain. Reminds me that there's time to change, hey. Since the return from her stay on the moon She listens like spring and she talks like June Hey, hey, hey Hey, hey, hey Tell me, did you sail across the sun? Did you make it to the Milky Way To see the lights all faded And that heaven is overrated? Tell me, did you fall from a shooting star? with a permanent scar and did you miss me while you were looking for yourself out there I changed the key now that she's back from that soul vacation tracing her way through the constellation hey hey Checks out Mozart while she does Tybo. Reminds me that there's room to grow. Hey, hey, I don't know who comes up with this kind of lyrics. Now that she's back in the atmosphere, I'm afraid she might think of me as plain old Jane. Told a story about a man who's too afraid to fly, so he never did land. Tell me, did the wind sweep you off your feet? Did you finally get the chance to dance along the light of day and head back to the Milky Way? Tell me, did Venus blow your mind? Was it everything you wanted to find? And did you miss me while you were looking for yourself out there? Na, 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 na. Song's called Drops of Jupiter. Makes no sense at all. Uh, the lyrics are basically just gibberish, but uh, but they're very uh, poetic. <clears throat> uh, now here's a song that I, I I've gotten requests for ever since I started the Discord channel, and it's a very difficult song, but it's a good song. It's an odd song. Um, I believe the guy who wrote it, whose name is Terrible Tim, uh, passed away recently, <clears throat> which is very sad. Uh, I don't know what specifically this song is about, but um, I'm going to try to do it. It's called Brother Man Bill. Brother Man Bill is a brother living
like they're imbeciles. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Brother man builds so much paper, his face should be on a bill. Da -da 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 -da. Brother man bill, brother man bill, brother man bill. Da -da 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 -da. The brother man bill, the brother man bill, the brother man bill. The song actually goes on for about eight minutes, and maybe we'll do it again, but uh, I think that was basically the gist of it. So I want to thank uh, Tim Leff on the okay. Discord and also Max for uh, for requesting that song. It's very odd. It's I, My guess, and, I, and I'm not sure, but I think that um, the meaning behind the lyrics is that the song is about uh, someone named Brother Man Bill. Um, okay. Uh, I think it's time to go ahead and, and, by the way, I have flour all over my mouse here, so I'm having a hard time uh, okay. operating it here, uh, but I'm going to need it. See if you guys are with me. Uh, yeah, um, Woosh Blamo says rip, R.I.P. Okay. Terrible Tim. Yeah, purple nothing. Purple donut filling is fruit. It is true that when you have a stroke like me, sometimes hard to tell to be to read instructions the recipe on correctly to the amount and order in numbers. Yep. Uh, okay. Mr. Vade, what about Tiny Tim? I like him. I think... When, unfortunately, we found out that he passed away. I mean, that's what it says on the internet. I don't know. Um, Lextor Cheater Learns Dooch. Is the kitchen real or CGI? No. I have in the past used green screen technology to make it look like I'm in the kitchen. But for now, I really am in the kitchen. You can see I'm touching the refrigerator. <clears throat> so, all right. There's a new game that's just come out, um, brand new. It's called Food Truck Simulator. Um, I'm very good at cooking. I'm not very good at games, but let's see if we can actually do this. Um, Well, normally we have uh, roast beef in there, but he's not there right now. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and start this game without further ado. Um, food truck simulator. Um, boy, it's a bad sign when you can't even open the thing. So I'll be uh, relying on you guys to let me know that everything's going well from a technical standpoint. Um, Chicken Liver Nuts says, ask Alexa. Yeah, Alexa, how much time left do we have on our timer? There are no timers set. No timer set, I forgot. Uh, Alexa, uh, uh, set timer for okay. 40 minutes. 40 minutes, starting now. Okay. I don't want to exit the game. Um, no. Okay. 
Okay, so here we go. This is basically, we're gonna do a new game. Don't forget you have a radio in your truck. Uh, so it looks like it's loading or something here. Yeah. This is the last competition he was healthy enough to participate in. <sighs> At least he okay. had one last victory. And now what? The truck is a mess. Maybe there's something in this album I could use to help me. Dad was always so good at that. Only I can touch the truck, he used to say. No mechanics getting his dirty hands on it. All right. This guy's Let's voice sounds a little bit like mine anyway, so that's good. His, his dad sounds like he was a little bit of a dick. Uh, hold on. I think I'm going to try to move this. I'm having a little bit of an issue... Uh, with the window uh, size or something. Uh. <laughs> okay. For some reason, I'm not able to see uh, the whole thing. I'm not sure why that would be. But that's okay. You guys can see everything fine too. Looks low res, okay. Well, we're just going to, uh, as long as this isn't absolutely terrible. Okay. Uh, it looks like what we need to do is use our PC here. We're going to uh, paint our truck so we can use... Uh, any kind of paint that we want. Um, <laughs> I really like this color. Okay, so we're going to go with green and then we're going to choose our layout. That looks about right. Okay, and then we're gonna change our wheels, I guess. Fix our flat tires. And um, so what we're doing now is we're getting our food truck together, I guess, while we're cooking our Spanakopita. I noticed somebody asked out there uh, whether we were cooking, and yes, we're in a little bit of downtime now. We wanna install our new grill machine. So that's done and we've unlocked a new recipe it looks like uh, we know how to make burgers now and um, we need to now make uh, uh, purchase that looks so much better now this is kind of an annoying okay, part Dad, of it. I, I, I thought we would get just this show on the road. I thought we were just going to get cooking, and now we're doing all kinds of administrative stuff. You know, I think next I'm supposed to get my truck driver's license and stand in line at the DMV or something like that. But right now we're just finishing up uh, this, so. Yeah, I unfortunately can't seem to see the whole thing. Um, interact with the album. Okay. Oh, I see. There's an album right here. <laughs> Dad always made these trips so fun to go on. Okay. That looks good. I'm pretty sure he had a city map laying around here somewhere. Uh, 
find the map in the garage. Um, okay, I'm getting some uh, technical advice here. Okay. Let's do here. Uh, in the graphics... Um, wait, that's not right. Display. Oh yeah, that there was something weird going on there. Okay, I think that's what we want. All right, does that look better? Okay. So there's a map somewhere. Is it over here? Okay, so here's our map. Install the radio. Okay. Uh, yes. I yeah, sorry, I, I just kind of want to start uh, the cooking, but I'm doing all kinds of other stuff. Graphics, motion play. Right. Uh, okay, I'm going to take your uh, your guys' advice on this. I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. because I can't escape. Okay guys, I'm in big trouble now. I'm gonna tell you why. I don't know how to escape the game. I think I'm like stuck in it. Actual blind says no need for frustration. So, and Kiroslavia says none of us can escape. So, uh, let's see if we can figure out why that's happening. I'm pushing escape. I'm pushing left, right, everything. Does anybody have any advice? Yeah, hitting the escape key literally does nothing. So, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna figure this out, not on your time, so we'll do that a different time. Alt, tab. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and, uh, Now I don't even have my cursor, so I can't. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that there's a way that I can, uh, okay. All right, I think we're gonna try something else. I'm gonna try to, uh, let's see. Control shift escape then close program. All right, that's getting into stuff that I'm not really uh, gonna be able to do right now. I'm gonna go ahead and close the game. Um, Tamag Tamaguchi12 says another great gaming session. Yeah, thanks. I thought that went really well. Um, there was a lot of administrative stuff where I was uh, buying uh, furniture and stuff and putting it in the truck. I will, um, be figuring out the little problems there and I'll probably do it again tomorrow on my Thursday night stream but I'm sorry if uh, that was a little bit frustrating for people um, okay well this would be a good time since we have some time if anybody wants to uh, request a song Okay, Hacklin wants to hear uh, a song here. 
you might have heard this song in the intro section. It's a song that's very close to my heart, and I usually play it while I'm waiting for stuff to cook. Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have 29 minutes left on your 40-minute timer. Okay, that's not bad. Help me make it through the night Cause I am tired and alone I want you to be singing along Help me make it through the night Cause I don't like myself anymore I guess I'm just not interesting I have no personality I met a guy with cancer And he felt sorry for me I'm always coming in last place And getting dirt kicked in my face And I guess that's just the way it's meant to be Help me make it through the night Cause I don't like myself That song goes out to Hacklin because I think Hacklin was feeling that way and uh, I understand. Um, let's see, uh, there were some other ones on the uh, on the Discord, but uh, let's see. I want to see if you guys have any... Oh, uh... The Bala Koala, the Bala Koala, can we hear the Irish song? I guess you're probably talking about the Irish jig from Jose Suicidio. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can to remember the lyrics. Now, this is a traditional Irish song, but it made famous by Jose Suicidio. Um, As I was roving on the bog on a misty Irish morning, an Englishman jumped up and shouted, Ho, top of the morning, ho, ho, a bottle of rum, fancy jig and a toddy, oh, shitting in a bucket with a drunken whore, and I go home in the morning, a bottle of rum and a fancy jig, and the road rise up to me, she put another shrimp on the Barbie friend, and I'll be there to greet she ro, ho, a little I do. a lot of words and okay. um, some of those lyrics didn't really age very well but this is one of those traditional songs that was probably written several hundred years ago and um, that might be my okay. favorite love song that's uh, Mr. Vade oh my favorite Jose song oh okay that's cool yeah I guess it's kind of a love song um Oh, someone's asking if I can do uh, It's All About Me. That's uh, Ari Cake 7. I'll try. Uh, that one's... I think I can't remember which key. on that one because I don't remember any of the lyrics um, 
So, I, but I appreciate the request for that one. Let's see. Do I know any murder ballads? Murder um, ballads. I'm not sure I do. Um, Limpy just joined us. What are you making today? We're making Spanakopita or Spanakopita or Spanakopita or Spanakopita or Spanakopita. Uh, you can put the, uh, you can stress whichever syllable that you want, um, which is true for most Greek words. Um, it's mostly a Spana coming from the word spinach and Copita coming from the word pita. So it's mostly a bread spinach hybrid situation um so okay um, this might be a bad idea but i'm gonna try to get uh my cat roast beef back in the frame here i don't know if it's gonna work or not Yeah, he's been sleeping underneath the sink, and I was kind of worried about him. But, uh... Here we go. At the moment, he's a little bit confused. Well, shit. He's drinking water. What I'm trying to work up to here is that I'd like to uh, play a little bit of this game, and this might be a bad idea because of the luck that I had with the last game, but uh, we played it last time and it went pretty well. Uh, I want to do this game called Stray, which is uh, which we did last time. I don't know if anybody was with us, but... Um, yeah, I think we can probably get this going. And if, if we don't, then that's all right. We'll have Spanakopita or Spanakopita. Um, chicken liver nuts, can we do a death check? Yeah, no, we've done the death check and it looks like he's doing okay. Um, now what I need is to turn on the game. So what this is, is it's a game about a cat. And I think this one's going to behave a little bit better than the other one did. Yeah, it's already uh, going a little bit smoother here. Okay. So... We also have our roast beef cam here that we're gonna try to uh, put on while he's drinking some water. So uh, for those of us uh, who weren't here last time, we've got this cat who's we're calling roast beef, who's basically um, based on roast beef, the cat. And he was a rescue cat, I didn't, uh, no, I don't know what happened to him before we met him, but I like to think that he was in this post-apocalyptic universe wearing a jetpack, as you can see there. Um, that doesn't work. It's actually a computer, but he goes around and talks to people. He's in this weird town. Um, he's trying to find notebooks. So, um, oh. I gotta get my controller here. Let's see if you guys have uh, said anything there. Okay, yeah, so we've got this strange thing here. Is it, 
it's a very old binary code you have here. Only a real geek can read this. Okay, this seems to be where we've been this whole time. All right. So I guess we're going to have to just sort of go around here. Uh, we can do some scratching here, which is kind of nice. But we're trying to find out about the universe that we're in. guy's bedroom now. Oh, here we go. We can read this. <laughs> Back home. I remember this video game. Okay, so apparently that's a video game this guy likes to make. It was made right after I was created, I think. I can remember it well. Spent a lot of time playing. Oh, I miss him. Okay, so we have a new memory. We've already talked to that guy. I think it's time for us to leave here. The symbol on the wall matches the one on the notebook. All right, well that seems like a pretty good clue that that's where we're supposed to go. Kid Suzumi says, is this fan-made game about roast beef? Yeah, it is, exactly. Um, wow, that was kind of a big jump there. Okay, so we're in a little elevator here. That's cool. So we're trying to get to whatever that thing was. if anybody's played this game before I was just told to go to this uh, room but I don't know exactly why I was told to do that uh, yeah chicken liver nuts roast beef was very acrobatic in, in this day uh, yeah now he's just an old guy as a matter of fact the camera seems to have hard to get him to uh, do anything interesting, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's not a good shot of a cat by any means. But, alright. We're going to continue that saga, but right now we got to check out what's going on over here. It's knocked over a bunch of shit. something here, right? Alright. Hacklin says I need to go to the river. 
press the meow button to meow. Okay. There's a crack in the door. Oh, right here. Oh, look at that. I was able to go right through. That was a good call. Here's a computer. Take Clementine's notebook. Nice work, another notebook. This one seems to belong to someone named Clementine. Everything is going according to plan. I went too fast. Uh, before the transceiver went. And, uh goes on to say other shit here. Um, they're in a place called Midtown. Apparently it's controlled by some oppressive force. I talked to Momo, his eyes. I know his look. We will not, he will not come with us. Let's find other notebooks. All right, so we're finding notebooks. Um... All right, I'm gonna take, oh, here we go. There's something here that I'm supposed to grab. Oh, sheet music, that's for the musician guy. Maybe we'll go try to find that guy. I'm gonna make a side comment here. Um, I'm a little out of sorts because we're making Spanakopita and I'm looking very forward to it. It smells delicious. Um, We've tried a couple of games here. The first one I'm going to go back to, but uh, Food Truck Simulator was basically a lot of administrative t stuff, you know, filling out paperwork, um, getting our driver's license and going to the DMV and standing in line and installing uh, equipment and everything. I know eventually it's going to get to cooking and we're going to do that. Now, I mean, Stray, which is a fascinating game. It's got a cat with a jet pack and he can run around and everything. But at the, mo at the moment, we're just looking for notebooks. And, you know, as exciting as that is, at the moment, I'm just kind of a little bit um, thinking that we're probably going to do just a little bit more of this. And I think we're going to take our Spanakopita out of the oven and just start eating it. Because I'm getting a little bit um, frustrated. But here we go. Um... We're going to play a little bit more. And also, I'm a little upset that we can't get roast beef into the frame. Let me see if I can find them. He seems to have disappeared, but maybe he'll come back. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this music that we just found to the musician, because I know that's something that we're supposed to do. Uh, if I can get down from here. Press to ask B12 for help. B12 is this computer who sits on my back. I think the outsiders seem to live in the upper flats. We won't find anything in these narrow streets. Okay, well, I guess it's trying to say that I, it doesn't want me to go down here, but... Yeah, that wasn't helpful at all. Here we go. There's a musician guy here. He's gonna practice. We should ask him if he knows uh, all about me. That would be cool. Morosk, do you think you can find more? I've already showing them a bunch of them. Cool down. I think I can play this.
It is a little bit like uh, Jose Suicidia. Okay, that's enough, buddy. Um, roast beef is going to go to sleep here. No Meek says, this sounds like new jobbies. Oatmeal game. Henry, I didn't know you were in this game. Oh yeah, that's me. The robot with the cool hair situation. All right, so roast beef is currently in some kind of apocalyptic hell now at this point. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, give it a break because I have uh, something called um, ADHD and uh, it, there's just a little bit too much going on with the Spanakopita and everything and I'm not really able to concentrate. I hope that's going to be okay with everybody. I will say that tomorrow night we have a very exciting stream uh, that's going to happen with a streamer named Moki's Nirvana and we're going to play trivia and hopefully okay. my, my brain will be working for trivia tricks. And um, we're also going to play a little bit of um, uh, uh, Overcooked 2, which I've actually been practicing a little bit, and that's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have 7 minutes and 30 seconds left on your 40-minute timer. All right, so let's quit the game. Okay, so Dave for uh, D four V E X. I'm very good at throwing food at the enemy and overcooked. Okay, good. Space Myco, good enough. All right, so maybe some song singing. Yeah, if you guys have a request for a song, I'll do it. Hacklin says he's getting impatient over here. I say he. I don't know if Hacklin is he or not, but uh, I'm assuming because they're getting impatient. Uh, Bruce Lee, when will you duo stream with Forson? I don't know. Um, Kiroslavius, uh, should I eat uranium? Because I once read that it has 20 billion calories, which would mean that I would never have to eat again. I didn't know that uranium had calories, but it does stand to reason. Um, all right, I'm going to grab the guitar here. I'm going to go ahead and do a Delicious. little bit of this number. Um, Quanto donated $10. That's very nice, Quanto. And I want to say uh, that... Um, this is probably as good a time as any for me to go through and thank all the people that have been uh, helping me out technically ever since we started. Um, the moderators, uh, Dingo Bob, Fawken, Dom Beef, Hottest Bear, Do Dingle, Dog Oggy, and Dr. Flanges. Also, um, uh, Bakus is a new moderator on there too. Also, Sir Doom, who introduced me to uh, the LGX, Bumble Vision, and Daisy Blossom, and Melon95 and Pilskman, who've come forward offering help, and uh, all the major streamers like Moon Moon and uh, Forsen. And I always want to make sure that I uh, give a special mention to Nim because Nim is the one that uh, started showing my videos and uh, had me on his uh, channel. And I taught him how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it started the entire Henry's Kitchen um, Twitch channel. So I want to thank him for that. Also, XQC, Brian W. Foster, my friend Bill Larkin Music. And I want to say something about Quanto. Quanto is actually uh, the one who's responsible for the amazing graphics that we now have on Henry's Kitchen. Uh, this really blows my mind. The fact that we were able to do this 
Um, and uh, and have the same graphics that we did uh, during the uh, the YouTube video. So thanks, Quanto, for that. And um, let's see, that paper is looking a bit rough. I'm not sure which paper you're referring to. Uh, okay. I'm gonna try try to get through this song, but uh, we'll see if the memory serves when it comes to the lyrics. Uh, this is another traditional song. It's by Jose Suicidio, but uh, it's it's an old song, so some of the lyrics may not have aged very well. It's called "The Horror of Sausalito." She was the horror okay. of Sausalito. Just how to ease your mind But if you asked her if she loved you She'd just smile and bat her eyes For the horror of Sausalito Never okay. lies She says she hails from Pasadena The sailors know her name And if you mention Palos Verdes She will smack you like a mule And if you mention San Jose She'll do the same She never has the gall to say She's sorry And all the sailors think that she's insane But in a world where no one else will love me Jesus Christ himself has shunned me The horror of Sausalito heals my pain She was the horror of Sausalito But that was many years ago but if you listen very close, you'll hear her crying in the breeze. For the horror of Sausalito never free. Cause the horror of Sausalito lives in me. That was uh, the horror of Sausalito. Which uh, is uh, a very interesting song about a, I assume, a young lady. And I don't think that she's a real um, sex worker. I think that that uh, term was being used back in those days as sort of a figurative thing. Um, hey, Doug Oggy says, did Henry get a new camera? Yeah, I did. I'm all we at Henry's Kitchen are always trying to increase the production value the best that we can. The gaming stuff needs a lot of work. Um, but uh, we're definitely getting there. I think I will have nightmares about being in the game and not being able to get out. That was kind of scary to me. But, I, uh, but you guys were able to talk me through it. And that's good. Um... See if you have, uh, the queen died, LOL. It was just an insult. I'm not sure what was an insult. Arch bounce. You say we at Henry's kitchen. Who else is on the team? Well, it's basically just me. Um, but, uh, I guess you could say my cat roast beef is, is part of the we. Um, oh. Alexa, stop. All right, but we do have one other issue that we have to attend to. Of course. And that's that the battery uh, in this camera has gone out. So I'm going to fix that real quick. You can, uh, in the meantime, see parts of the kitchen, but this should be a really quick process. 
because I want to make sure that you guys are able to see what the dish looks like when it's all said and done. Oh no. Um, this I think that this is gonna come out delicious so here we go we're gonna need an oven mitt okay it looks pretty good um, I'm going to thank Roast Beef for letting us use his uh, camera for this. I just have to move some stuff around. Okay, so this is our Spanakopita. I think I'm also able to... Uh, Adjust the zoom level on this. <laughs> there we go. There's our Spanakopita. And watch out, because this is going to be very, very hot. Uh, so this is Greek spinach and pita dish. And uh, we're going to put it on a little plate. Oh, shit. We were going to... We were going to cut it up into triangles and... Uh, I forgot. So we're going to do that now, and I think it'll be okay. I think it might make it a little bit difficult. Um, let's see here. Uh, I, I'm going to take our knife thing. If we're going to make them into triangle, yeah, the, the bread is basically just falling apart at this point. But you know what? It doesn't mean that it's going to taste bad. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm not going to cut this whole thing. I feel like I've put you guys through enough uh tedious time type things now there is one issue and that's that the parchment paper that I used on the bottom looks strikingly similar to the uh, phyllo dough which means that I have to make sure that I'm not getting that in my dish You know what? I'm going to say that this is probably very likely to be one of our successful dishes. One of our more successful dishes. So if you are working with us at home, if you have uh, some pictures that you want to send maybe on the Discord channel, you can feel free to show those. Uh, I'd like to see what your uh, Spanakopita looks like. Spanakopita. We never really got to the bottom of what the preferred way to do it in Greece is, but I imagine it's probably something along the lines of uh, what we've been doing. 
Okay, so this is our Spanocopita. Uh, and if we look at, uh, so obviously theirs is a little tighter. And I think that they have a golden thing happening on the top because of, uh, I, it occurs to me, I think we should have put some kind of butter or oil or something on the top of ours because it doesn't have that crisp golden thing happening on the top. But other than that, we basically have spinach and phyllo bread, which is where the word spanicopita comes from. And now for the fun part, eating it. I've always said that uh, if, if you're not eating your own food, I mean, if you're not really enjoying your own food, then nobody else is. It's a little similar to the expression about um, if you don't love yourself, then how are you going to be able to love anybody else? Or how is anybody else going to love yourself? Something like that. But if you don't cook food and eat your own food, how could you possibly expect your neighbors to eat it when you put it on their doorstep, for example? Um, but anyway, I don't mean to ramble here. Let's let's see what we got here. It's a little papery. Hmm. It's interesting. It's certainly not good, but it's um, it's very exotic tasting, you know. It really does taste a little bit like there's paper on it, and there actually might be, now that I think about it. Um, I can definitely taste the spinach uh, Raziel's Lament says what kind of flavor does the parchment paper add yeah I I want to show you guys this because um, I am a little bit worried we have parchment paper here which looks very similar to our actual dish so I want to make sure that what I'm eating here is not uh, and that didn't happen of course with theirs and I think it's again because we didn't use any butter or something I don't know but let's go ahead and continue to eat here Spana Capita this is a very popular delicacy in Greek if you if you go to uh, in Greece if you go to a Greek restaurant You'll find Spanakopita. Let's see if there's some more questions here. Uh, Altvol14 says, The ancient Greeks used to eat parchment paper, so you should be fine. I didn't know that. Fakan, do you know if you're close to reaching the requirement for getting partnered on Twitch? I believe you're the required streamed hours. Yeah, thanks. Um, it's been a long journey. It goes back to May. Um... I'm very close to becoming a partner on Twitch. Uh, I think I'm a little short on some of the hours streamed, but I'm hoping that um, that's something that we can do by the end of, uh, hopefully by the end of this month. I, I think I'll set that as a goal. It might yeah. mean that I have to do one stream that's just a special stream um, to, try to, to try to meet the requirements. But I yeah. want to say very sincerely that everybody on here who's been supportive since the very beginning, I really appreciate it. And uh, I want to say thank you to a couple of these people who've been subscribing. Cloud R. Doodle, Traswal, Dagogi, resubscribed, Ekunks, Quanto Tipped, thank you Quanto, Hot Bear, 1110, resubscribed, and Joffy, Herng, Chuck Little, okay. Kalamazoo Dog, Panda Scams. I want to make sure I read that right. Panda Scams, Dismo, Zuzu Meister, Yakobi, Tuxo, 
Gaming, Jacob, okay. Johnny, DTV, uh, so many people, C-Specs, Coffee with Coom. I remember Coffee with Coom. And then a couple, uh, Stoked Pampika, very cool title. Quif Quifity, thank you. Thank you guys for subscribing. All right. Uh, somebody just said they just uh, subscribed for the first time. The Asquilade. I just joined for the first time. Thanks, the Asquilade. Thanks for showing up. We just made Spanakopita. Okay. Thanks, the Derpy Owl. Um, Spanakopita is a... Um, Greek delicacy if you're just joining us and I'd say uh, came out pretty fucking good Super Potatoes 1989 will I ever break out the electric guitar sure yeah maybe we could do that maybe once I'm a partner we'll break out the guitar the electric guitar maybe that's like a good goal um, keep me to okay. that So, the paper is actually pretty good. But either way, it's going to be lunch, and it's going to be dinner, and it's going to be breakfast tomorrow. So, we're eating it, whether it tastes good or not. I'm going to get a big old chunk of the, chick of the spinach here. Spanakopita. I never would have thought that that would be a dish that we would make that would come out delicious. And I was right, it didn't. Um, but uh, hen lips want, oh, somebody said uh, make calamari next time. That sounds pretty good. Calamari, I'm certainly down for. I believe that's squid or octopus or something, deep fried. I've had it a lot of. Uh, restaurants. I was eating it for years before I knew exactly what it was and then I kind of stopped. Um, but it is delicious, mostly the deep fried part. But um, one thing that I've learned is if you deep fry anything, it could be fish that you've had in your fridge for several months, it's still going to taste okay because of the deep frying uh, process. Dallas Drone do you have all your old streams saved? Yeah, they're all saved. I haven't uh, done much with them yet, but uh, at some point we're going to make a channel that's um, that's got all of that on there. So, um, Jellied Eels. That's uh, Kipper Z says, uh, have you tried the British delicacy Jellied Eels? No, uh, but that sounds like one that we're going to probably have to try. That's right, deep fried butter is a delicacy, says Hooligan. Um, all right, well, I'm going to continue to eat my spinacapata. And it's going to be healthy because you can't really go wrong with all that spinach. Of course, the cheese is a little bit much. Maybe I wouldn't have put as much cheese on there, but I think overall we're doing okay. So, why don't we call this a success? And um, except for the gaming part, that was a real failure. I um, I need to work out uh, a couple of the technical details with Food Truck Simulator. I'll be doing it tomorrow night for the late night variety hour stream. Um, I'm just not very good at uh, troubleshooting on the spot, and so I was just uh, pushing the eject button there. The escape button but um and then the stray one was kind of uh it was a little bit slow moving for my uh attention span since we had food in the oven and what's what not and i wasn't really feeling it but we're gonna get back there too and um but hey you know at least our dish came out well it came out i don't know what else there is to say about that but uh I want to thank everybody for the support here at Henry's Kitchen. October is going to be an amazing month because it's going to be Halloween month. We're going to make Frankenstein heads like I did on YouTube, um, pumpkin pancakes, 
um, all kinds of fun stuff. Pizza, um, my Jacko pizza, uh, which came out pretty good. It was Halloween themed. So uh, I just want to say it's good to see everybody and thank you so much. And um, I hope uh, you have a great rest of the week. And, um, and thanks again for joining me.